Hi there. We are ready to get started with today's webinar. I'm Madeline Sinkowski, the Community Manager at Ed Social Media, and I want to welcome you to today's presentation and discussion, Five Tips to Get Started with Google Plus Pages. As you may have read on the registration page, today's webinar will be centralized around the recent announcement of Google Plus Business Pages. If you're tweeting about the webinar today, be sure to include uh, hashtag Ed Social Media so we can track the conversation and answer your questions. I'm here with Peter Barron, a co-founder of Ed Social Media and president of Admissions Quest, and Bill Stites, blogger and chief of EdSocialMedia.com and director of IT at the Montclair Kimberly Academy, to talk about the potential power behind your organization's Google Plus page. We are going to brush on some of the current frustrations, shortcomings, and benefits of the new Google Plus pages. Um, and listeners, beware, this conversation is a fluid product of the current studies and blog posts that have been made available by people like us, and I'm sure you who have been experimenting with Google Plus pages. Um, so the truth is, as most of you know, the Google Plus, uh, the way Google Plus will evolve will emerge with time, and we're going to continue to review this topic as more information becomes available. So feel free to chime in where you see fit, and we will field as many comments and conversations as we can. Um, so to kick off the presentation, I'm going to quickly walk through the screens of what occurs when you're setting up your Google Plus page, um, and Bill is going to chime in as he sees fit um, to talk about some of the frustrations he saw as, um, as he was setting up his page as well. So just as you're going through um, Google Plus, you, you do have to start to create a business page from your Google Plus profile. So um, hopefully you've gone ahead and set up your individual um, Google Plus profile page. Um, to do to to get everything started, you need to navigate along the right hand side um, to create your first Google Plus page. Um, and to do that, it'll redirect you to um, this this landing page here, where you'll be able to pick a certain category that you uh, will affiliate your organization or school, for that matter, um, with. So depending on which category you choose, um, you'll have different subcategories that you can associate your page with. Um, so it's, for example, we um, went through and set up a, a fake page for a company called Anchor Place Yoga, just to kind of show you some of the screenshots um, that happen as, you, as you're setting up your page at the, on the OnStart. Um, Bill, do you want to chime in on anything right away? Yeah, no, this was this was where um, I was stymied early on just with regards to the fact that this needed to come out of uh, my individual profile. Um, and as I was going through all of this, um, I kind of came back, back to the start when I discovered that um, I wouldn't be able to add any additional admins to my Google Plus page. Um, one of the one of the things that we always recommend is that you have more than one admin, or you have a centralized account that you can use uh, that multiple people have access to. That way, no one person has ownership over your your school or your company's uh, social presence in, in any of these areas. And that fact uh, required that I actually created a profile for our school. Um, as a Google Plus profile of its own, so that was that was the first stumbling block we kind of hit. Yeah, we did too. You know, and we had to go. We have several um, Ed Social Media accounts, so with YouTube, um, and you know, we have we actually have Ed Social Media through apps, and so we actually had to go in and create a new account so we could have a an, an administrative email address asso associated with our Google Plus page. Um, so it is kind of a frustrating process right now if you are with an institution that likes to um, have that safeguard, you know, where you have a general email. Login. So as we were setting up, um, or as I was setting up this individual company page, um, it, you know, it brings you through a couple really intuitive um, drop-down and field boxes that you'll need to fill in your your um, your title of your institution, your website, what category you might fall under, and where that health drop-down um, is displaying. That actually will change depending on whether you're a local business, a product, um, arts, entertainment, or sports. So um, you know, choose one that that fits the most appropriately for you. 
Um, once you select your category, you'll be presented with this um, customize your page pro public profile. And this tagline is something that's really important in the process. And you can go ahead and edit this information after you've um, gone through the initial setup process. And Peter will talk later in the presentation more about um, what you might want to include in this um, in this tagline and or in other um, fields along the way. Bill, did you have any re heavy recommendations as as people are getting started as to what they might include? No, not not in the tagline area. That was just something where we pulled you know a basic description. I actually used what we had on our uh, Twitter profile for our school and just popped that in there. Sure. And the profile photo, um, you know, we always recommend making it something really instantly recognizable of your school. Um, you'll see that a lot of the first schools that are on Google Plus have decided to use their logo. Um, I've suggested in some of the other workshops and boot camps that we've done, like for Facebook and Facebook profiles, maybe, maybe if you have a designer in-house, you could drop your logo over a photo. So then you kind of get to show off a certain aspect of your school as well. But you'll also see that Google Plus does a great job of showcasing these photos, so you might not feel that to be as necessary um, with Google+. Um, so this is kind of something that was interesting too. So once you click through uh, your customize your page's public profile, you'll come to this. And because I was setting up this page through my personal profile, it asked me if I want to um, share that I just created this page. Um, and of course, for this instance, you know, it's an Anchor Place Yoga, so it's kind of this fun thing that is directly affiliated with me. So of course, I do want to share that with my circles. What might, what you might find frustrating is if you have gone in and created this administrative account to protect the safeguard against, um, you know, creating your school's page, then you kind of have an empty network. So you're sharing this with, with no one, right, Bill? Yeah, that was the that was the exact kind of you know that was a second gotcha in in that process of creating that account and then going in that way is once we got the the piece up there we had no no one to share it with it's almost as if if you're comparing this to something like Facebook you could only share this with people that like your page and how do you do that if you have no one liking your page yet you can't share it with anyone so yeah it was a second stumbling block in that in that setup process. Sure, which is interesting because then you know our our um, social social channel of choice is Twitter. We really enjoyed the interaction that we get on Twitter, and so whenever we set up our Google Plus page, we went out and you know tweeted a link to our Google Plus page, and it seems kind of counterintuitive as to you know hopefully you'd be creating a page within a network um, that is our that you would share within your your circle anyway. So that was an interesting roadblock to come to. Um, as you um, as you're sharing within your your circles, you can add a comment. Um, and what's really cool is that you can customize who you um, publish this comment to. So I think it's really um, a powerful tool that you can actually add multiple circles to. So it's kind of like um, when you're creating an email um, and you want to send it to multiple groups, you actually can choose who you're who you're publishing this information to. And I think that will prove um, really really useful down the road. So once you get into um, creating your page, it'll take you through a couple initial steps, which we just saw for the really basic information. And then it'll ask you to go through and edit other information um, as, as you see fit. Um, but what's, what's interesting is it brings you into your page itself. So you start to land on your page that you've created. And it will say up at the top, it reminds you every time. You're now using Google Plus as this page. Your post comments and notification will be from this page. And that's really important and I think Facebook um, kind of did a poor job of, of explaining to people how you can navigate as your Facebook page. And so Google Plus makes it really easy for you to um, distinguish how you're presenting uh, content and information. Um, some important features to think about, and Bill can speak really specifically about Hangouts, and Peter will talk a little bit more about um, Google Plus Direct Connect down the road as well as the Plus One button. Um, but these are really three key components to Google Plus. These are um, pieces that will make it uh, stronger in the long run. And so um, Hangouts seems to be a really common topic within education right now. Um, you know, teachers are 
are facilitating hangouts for um, you know extra help. Bill, what have you kind of heard emerging in the education industry about hangouts? Well, it, it, it's, it has to do with hangouts and Google Plus in general. In that, Google Plus isn't currently included in what a lot of schools has with, have, which are the Google Apps for Education suite of products, and a lot of that has to do with issues around uh, COPA compliance, the uh, Children's Online uh, Privacy Protection Act, because there are issues with sharing information with uh, students that are um, under the age of 13 uh, and some of the issues around that. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of grumbling that they want to see some sort of Google Plus um, you know, page hangout piece brought down to uh, the lower school level or for, for whole schools to work out because the idea of using Hangouts to be able to have a, um, a, uh, a, a, a space where you can uh, video chat, text chat, as well as the open whiteboard space that it provides you is, is it really gives you a very nice um, classroom based area to, to come and to collaborate and work together. And for schools that are trying to figure out the balance between other kind of learning management systems like Moodle or Blackboard or Haiku or any of the other ones that are out there, um, and their Google um, Apps for Ed domain, Google Plus and the Hangouts, if that were available, um, would either very well complement those other things or actually might lead more people to using Google Apps uh, for Ed, you know, Google Plus and these Hangouts over those other over those other uh, management systems. So um, it's a real kind of you know mixed bag of who can use it based on the the age requirements and and what schools are going to be willing to do um, in that area. If if they do have students that are you know if you're dealing with classes that are you know, that kids that are 12 and 13, um, what do you do? And, and how do you deal with that? So there's a lot of talk there. Sure. Thank you. Um, so a couple other important features, and I'm going to quickly skim through these because Peter has um, some extensive explanations to some of this down the road. Um, but the Direct Connect feature is kind of something that's emerging, and it basically allows you to add that plus button. So if you go into your Google search bar and you type plus WWE, it'll actually bring you straight to the WWE um, Google Plus page. So it's um, it cuts out a couple of the clicks, and it makes a really direct connection. Um, Right now, they kind of have this elite group of um, companies that are participating in the Direct Connect feature, but I'm sure we'll start to see that emerge into a, um, a much more robust feature down the road. Um, the other one is the plus one button, and um, this kind of speaks on several accounts, but if you haven't already gone through and created your Google Plus page um, for your school, you, you definitely want to consider doing that sooner rather than later. I'm not sure if you saw the story today, um, but Bank of America actually hadn't done it yet, and so their brain, brand has kind of been brand jacked or hijacked, um, and so there's kind of some interesting um, information evolving out of that process right now. So go ahead and, and go and reserve um, if nothing else, you can watch the conversations that are emerging around Google+, Plus. but go ahead and take care of uh, getting your school's page in line. And then once you're doing that, you might talk about um, adding your plus one buttons um, to your sites down the road, and P Peter will show you more specifically how to do that. Um, so Peter's going to go ahead and move on from here. Okay, let me uh, I'll grab the... Uh... Maddie, while Peter's getting set up, what was was the Bank of America? Was there was there a um, was their site taken over? I mean, was somebody just putting up something that looked like it was from Bank of America? Yeah, so they had um, they had their page created as Bank of America, and they had a whole bunch of um, photos from the CEO, and they had the logo uploaded, and then they kind of had some really unfortunate. Um, 
um, posts that we're going out with it as well. So you might you might take a look and see if you can find it. It's actually the story is listed on Mashable.com. So if you want to read more about it, you can do that there. And and um, it actually brings me to my next point too. We will share several of these links that we've talked about. We've used a lot of references throughout the the information today. So we'll share those with each of the attendees as well. One of the one of the kind of the third gotchas that we came up with um, that. The reason I asked why I was curious about that is the the fact that every Google Plus page I know um, that uh, Peter's probably going to point this out is that it gives you a um, a non-descript URL. So um, I'll definitely be curious in looking into that. Hey Maddie, can you see my screen? I can. Great. Well, that was terrific, Maddie. Thanks, um, and Bill. Thanks for all the insight. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, I know Bill, you're looking at it at, from a community standpoint, right? You know, how do you facilitate conversation and engagement? All the things that we've been talking about for a long time. Now, yet on another platform. So we've been like working Twitter, we've been working Facebook, you know, we've been, you know, some people are, are active on, on Flickr, and, you know, there are just all these different outlets. And then all of a sudden, Google drops a bomb and says, hey, you got to be on. Google Plus as well. And I, I don't know about you, Bill and Maddie, but the first reaction I had when I heard that is, oh, and then you can imagine what the next word was. Uh, <laughs> it, it, exactly. It's, it's, like, it's overwhelming, right? You know, and, and my initial response to just Google Plus in general was, well, I don't, I just, I can't handle it. I'm overwhelmed. I, there's, I've got information flying in a lot of different directions. And frankly, you know, I, once I started my personal Google Plus profile, I logged in a couple times, and then I don't think I logged in again until they they uh, released the branded pages. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Uh, have, I'm guessing maybe there's some people. <coughs> um, but you know, it's interesting because when I heard about the branded pages, things started clicking for me. I started to understand. All right, I, I can see why this is going to be a really valuable resource, and. I'm looking at it much more from a search landscape, you know, search engine optimization. That's just something that I, I, I really enjoy thinking about and kind of cracking that nut. And, and I think that there is huge potential here for schools to uh, leverage Google Plus branded pages in a way that can really uh, benefit you know, uh, specific goals related to uh, traffic to your website or, you know, if you have particular calls to action that you want to implement. I think this can be an asset. So, you know, as this has been unfolding, and I've been kind of playing with it on my own with, with the admissions quest Google Plus page, you know, there's been some, some posts that have gone live, I think really started yesterday, that started to highlight the fact that all of a sudden Google Plus is now beginning on a limited basis to show up in organic search. So, you know, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, Maddie had referenced WWE, which, I, you know, to me, it will always be WWF, but you know, it's WWE, I suppose, World Wrestling Entertainment, or whatever it's called now. Um, and when you type WWE into Google, in addition to seeing all of the the, the organic organic uh, search related to their website, so you know, above at the very top, you see the official site of WWE, and then you see some of the sub uh, categories underneath that. Now, in line with those subcategories, they're actually driving uh, the Google Plus page for WWE, which I think is fascinating. So now, in some ways, you know, as an outside observer looking in, I almost get the sense that they're weighing their Google Plus page as heavily as they're weighing their uh, uh, their domain. So that that's kind of something that, that that piqued my attention, and I think should should probably be on most schools' radars as well. And, and not only that, but they're also allowing you directly from uh, the, the, the return page, the search engine return page, to actually add uh, WWE to your circle straight from this page. So yet another way to kind of stream an organization's content and message into your own personal network. Now, I think the thing to be aware of here that this is only if you're logged into Google+. If you're not logged into Google+, uh, I don't believe that appears. Is that right, Maddie? Yeah, that's what I've understood and read so far, and we've kind of tested our theory before. Um, so you will actually see the the comments and the plus count, but you won't see that add to circles feature. 
Um, and, you know, kind of zeroing in on that Google Plus display underneath the WWE return, you'll, you'll notice that they're also driving content that's posted to WWE's Google Plus page. And, and not only are they posting content, but they're time stamping. So, you know, as of uh, uh, me grabbing this screenshot two hours ago, they had November is Movember, and 11 hours before that, they had see what happened when this is your life, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, does that mean then that uh, we need to put publish content regularly to Google Plus? Do we have to have something up there, on, you know, on a daily, if not, you know, twice a day basis? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that yet. In fact, a lot of what we're talking about today is conjecture. It's stuff that we're reading, people are speculating, and we're trying to consolidate it here for you. But you know, what it tells me is that you know you need to have content on your Google Plus page especially as they begin to roll out this tighter integration across you know, the entire ecosystem of Google. Uh, keep in mind this is reserved for a pretty small group at the moment. I'm guessing they're probably you know, working with the kinks. But you know, the relevant content, good content, you know, content that's worth sharing, is you, 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 you'll have a pretty good chance of seeing it show up when somebody searches your school's name. Um, and so, you know, what are some of the things that you need to do? Maddie had, had mentioned Google uh, direct, direct before. Um, what that is is, you know, that plus WWE takes you to, you know, directly to WWE's Google Plus page, but, you know, only certain organizations are qualified for that. And I'm willing to bet that the organizations that are displaying their content here in the search re engine returns are probably part of that elite group that Maddie referenced earlier. Pop ahead here. So it's, if you want to be part of that group, you know there are a couple things that they're benchmarking. One, you know, do you do, do you kind of fit the, their their algorithm? You know, do you do you kind of measure up against what they're looking for? The other thing that they're looking for you to do, and, and this is pretty selfish on their part, but you know, smart at the same time is they want to uh, make sure that you put their Google Plus badge on your site. So much like you have, you know, follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook, uh, now they have made it available to you a Google Plus uh, badge that you can uh, literally display wherever you want on your school site. Makes sense, right? You want people who are visiting your school site to be able to also, you know, consume your content in their network of choice. If they happen to be really a partial to Google Plus, then absolutely you should have a, a button that takes them to your school's Google Plus page. And fortunately, they make it pretty easy for you. So you just go to this page, drop in your um, uh, custom identification. Now, unfortunately, it's not like a like Google, like Facebook, where you can have Facebook.com/slash your school. But you just grab this bit of code that comes after the .com, insert it there, and then on the fly, it will. Uh, generate the code for, for you and you can drop it on your site where you see fit. Um, it comes in a lot of sizes. There are multiple sizes, uh, multiple displays, so you can you can tweak it a bit to fit your school's design. And, and if you if you want to find this page where you can grab that, I've, I've listed the URL right here and uh, as Maddie said, you will make all of this stuff available to you after, so don't feel like you need to if you're, you know, madly write this down. Uh, we'll make sure to post it to the site. Um, so, you know, with that said, you know, an organization like Mashable has already gone about adding this to uh, their site. And if you notice over here on the upper right hand corner, you can uh, follow uh, Mashable on Google Plus and add, add them to your circle straight from this page. And, you know, just kind of a quick observation that I had as I was just putting together this slide is I noticed that they actually gave it weight over their Facebook. Uh, fan page uh, uh, area. It's actually at the very top. And I'm not sure if they did this, you know, consciously or not. But, you know, from a search standpoint, I'm sure they want to be as in line with Google as they possibly can. And, and I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Maddie, we looked just before we came on. What was the number of people who had followed Mashable on Google? 45,000 are already in, um, and they already have Mashable in some sort of circle. Yeah, that's pretty impressive considering what this has been about a week. Right. Yeah. yeah. One week, and they have forty-five thousand. Yeah, great. That would be that would 
that's a nice position to be in. So, <laughs> you want forty-five thousand people following following you? You need to uh, make sure you've got that Google Plus button on your site. Obviously, uh, I kid a little bit, but I do think you need to have that on your site if if it's an easy enough thing for you to do. Um, additionally, you'll notice that when you come back to the organic returns here for WWE, and we drill into the Google Plus uh, display, you know, in addition to saying time stamping it, they're also sharing how many people uh, plus one uh, the content and how, as well as the number of comments that are involved. So this is, you know, if, if you've been uh, kind of into SEO a little bit over the last couple of years and monitoring Google, I think there's something like 300 data points that they measure to qualify authority around content. So, you know, as they're looking at pages on your site, they're adding that, they're matching that up to these 300 data points. Uh, I'm sure one of these data points now is the number of plus ones and comments that you're getting on a per page slash content basis. So, you know, the more plus ones that you have, uh, the more comments that you have, the more popular that uh, uh, your content will be. And I, I, I'm guessing, and, and I, again, this is one big guess, that the content with, you know, the com some combination of time stamping and the number of comments that you get determine what content shows uh, in this little portal on the Google search return. And if you want to add uh, the plus one button, that's actually a pretty easy, easy thing to do. Uh, here on Ed Social Media, we, we went ahead and added it in just a couple of minutes. Now, you know, for us, we use WordPress to drive our site. So it was really just a matter of tweaking uh, the plugin that we use to display our social icons. So that was a pretty simple thing to do. Now, if you have some a site that you've, you've built, you know, in house, or you're using a vendor, um, you know, you can also grab code, uh, much like we saw with the circles button, and uh, get the plus one button right on Google as well. So you just you just decide how big you want it to be, you know, the width of the button. You know, it's a pretty simple form to follow, and, and you can access it here uh, again. Um, I'll leave this up for a second, but we'll also make this available uh, later on uh, when we post the, uh, the video from this webinar. So let's step back for a second. So we've gone ahead and we've added our circles buttons, our Google Plus button, we added our plus one button, you know, we're doing, we set up our Google Plus page, we've done everything right, but yet once you type in your school into the Google return, nothing shows up. So it begs the question, why do I care? You know, why do I need to put in all of this work and see little or no return as a result of that effort, which I think is a super valid question. So let's bring it back then to the actual Google Plus page itself. And generally, I try not to, to kind of display the work that I do from Admissions Quest uh, in webinars. But in this case, you know, it really was the tool that I had to kind of get a feel for Google Plus. So, you know, what I've done over the last day or two is I've started adding photos and updates and trying to optimize the page, and I've discovered a couple of interesting things. Um, one of them here is when you set up your school's uh, profile on Google+, they give you a really robust introduction where you can describe what your school is about. And so from a search perspective, there's some really fascinating components <coughs> to it. Uh, one, obviously, you can include your web domain, which I've highlighted down here at the bottom. But it also allows you to embed organic links within uh, the content in the introduction field. So you've got all of this anchor text that you can specify and begin to kind of tweak to the terms that are important to your school site. So if you're uh, of Massachusetts, if you're a, a private school in Boston and you're looking to rank for Boston private school, then you can actually create content and in there reference the fact that you're a Boston private school and activate that as a link back to your site, which is really, really important. It's, what, it's one of the ways that uh, Google measures whether the content uh, that you're, uh, someone's looking for kind of adds up to the content that you've created. If, uh, if, if, if you have people linking back to you as a Boston private school, it weighs in your favor and in increases your odds of showing up as a search return. Um, and so, you know, I showed here, you know, one of the keywords that, that we like to rank for is boarding school blogging. You'll notice that that's a, a link right there. 
you know, when I type in boarding school blog, we happen to come up as a, a return. The fact that I'm able to link uh, from the content in my about section and specify boarding school blog as that link only helps my efforts to continue to um, achieve the kind of ranking status that I'm looking for in, in Google. So that's a real gift, right? I, I think at the very least that as an organization, you should be paying pretty close attention to your introductory text here uh, on Google+, Plus, as well as making sure that it really kind of speaks to the broader sense of who you are as a school. So, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily just put a paragraph in here. I don't think it hurts to have a pretty kind of, you know, not dense. I don't think you, you certainly don't want to spam your, 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 your about section. But don't be afraid to kind of add four, five, six paragraphs that talks about who you are. Um, the other thing that I've been really impressed with so far with Google Plus is the fact that uh, their photo galleries are incredible. In fact, it's really getting me to rethink my strategy around how I display photos on the web. Uh, to date, I, I've been kind of archiving, categorizing my photos on Flickr. Um, and, and that's great because there is a community uh, of folks who are interested in photography there and, you know, potentially it could be to, to, to some good exposure for the schools that we work with. But I, I think that, that, that this new photo capabilities available through Google Plus offers a whole other dynamic that Flickr doesn't. And, that's, and that obviously is around search. So, you know, let's take this example here. A couple of years ago, I was out in California visiting uh, uh, schools in the Santa Barbara area, and one of the schools that I visited was done. So, you know, I took their photos this morning, I uploaded them, I made sure that each photo had a really kind of rich explanation of what I was seeing, and kind of wrote this with, it, you know, what are, how are people searching for schools? Because, you know, if you do a search, oftentimes the display is much richer now, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So, you know, you're adding all of these photos, you're, they give you a really good opportunity to kind of brand them and use good keywords to describe what they're about that comply with the kind of search terms that you're interested in. And, you know, as I said before, you know, if I were to go and do a search for Dunn School like I've done right now, you'll notice that over here on the right, you know, they've got their Google Places represented. They've got their a map, they're, they're driving photos, they're driving details, they're driving reviews. You know, all of these things are objects that kind of live across the web in different places. And what Google is doing is they're going out there and saying, okay, someone's searching for Dunn, so I see all these cool photos of Dunn. I'm going to display it here in my main return. I'm going to display a map so you can get directions right there if you want. You know, I'm going to display, you know, a kind of a cool description about who they are and so on and so on. And the reason they're, they're, they're doing this is because the web is, is moving into this object-oriented status where, you know, people are beginning to mark up their websites so that it's very easy for Google and for Bing to be able to pull these objects and display them as people are searching to give a far richer uh, uh, explanation and hopefully answer to, to, to what the searcher is looking for. I don't think it's much of a, a leap to suspect that based on Google, the Google Plus's photos, that the more photos that you upload to your Google Plus account, the better the, 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 the better you provide for them. I, I don't think it's a leap to, to, to suspect that eventually those photos will also show, along with your Google Plus page, on certain keyword searches that are potentially important to you. So, you know, the example of Los Olivos boarding school, if somebody was searching for, for that uh, long tail keyword phrase, uh, I, it wouldn't shock me in the weeks and months to come if pages that speak to boarding schools in Los Olivos and photos that are, are posted to Google Plus are generated and, and displayed in, in the organic returns. It, it just makes too much sense. They've got all this data, they're compiling on a daily basis, people are are uploading content, you know, they're really smart about indexing this information and showing it uh, uh, kind of in a, in a rich uh, and uh, helpful manner. So as a school, I think there are real opportunities here, especially those that get out in front of this earlier. So, you know, as you're kind of surveying the different keywords that are important to your school, you can begin to create photo albums that speak to those keywords so that potentially if somebody um, 
uh, searches for that combination of information that the photos that you want them to see potentially could show somewhere in down there. I, th I don't think it's, I think it's a, a reasonable conclusion. There are a lot of people who are speculating. I'm going to bet on it. I'm going to spend a lot more time in the weeks and months to come uploading our, 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 our photo library so that you know, we can uh, have that kind of advantage moving forward. And, and I, would, I would recommend the school taking a look at it. Uh, Peter, the thing that's so nice about this Google Plus uh, business page uh, interface is that it's really slick. It's pretty easy to use. They, they, it doesn't require a whole lot of thinking. It's, it's one of the best that I have seen out there. So, you know, for all of these reasons, uh, I have gone from kind of writing off Google Plus to actually becoming uh, a believer in someone who thinks that this is going to be a very important part of our outreach strategy moving forward. So, you know, Maddie, I don't know if any questions have come up along the way. I, I know I've kind of thrown a lot of information at people, but uh, if, if yeah. I had a single recommendation, it would be to, to take this seriously and make sure that, that you're, you're adding information that really speaks to who you are as an organization and complements you know, what you want to achieve from a search standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, Peter, thanks, I, Peter. I, yeah, go ahead, Bill. I actually had a question in that, do you think if a, because the pages are tied to individual accounts, did you see any way when you were putting in those photo albums to connect uh, to, if you have a pre-existing Picasso? Yeah. If you're looking at going across the Google ecosystem, yeah. did you see any, was there anything there? No, you know, that was my initial reaction too, was should I be uploading these to Picasso and trying to figure out some way to connect them? I couldn't figure out a way to do it, but I, I have read a couple of posts that suggest that Picasso is going to be um, essentially folded into the Google Plus uh, environment. Mm -hmm. And that is just you know, I actually, I actually read something too, Bill and Peter, um, that Picasa actually has the default now. So if you go and you create your Picasa album, there's something in there called a scrapbook. And if you upload any photos to that scrapbook album, it'll actually automatically sync to your Google Plus account. Um, I didn't test the theory, but you can see the the blank, you know, placeholders between the Google Plus and while you're in Picasa. So I think for a lot of reasons, Picasa might be a big player in this, you know, archiving photo industry. Um, so you might see more and more people moving away from Flickr and into Picasa um, because, you know, just like you said, Bill, a lot of these Google products are they're going to start to integrate across the board, right? You have to assume that Google will start to display um, your YouTube videos that are associated yeah. with your profile account. That's yeah, exactly I think that's where I was going to go. Awesome. One, one, one other question I have, and it has nothing to do with Google Plus, is given the fact that you're taking all the social channel, this new social channel, and integrating it into search, um, I'd be curious to see if Microsoft jumps into this ring any time in the, in the coming, uh, coming months. Well, you know, I think Microsoft owns a, a stake in Facebook, right? So, you know, oh. if, if you go to Bing, that, I mean, to Bing's point, they do a heck of a job of displaying returns. I mean, it's not always as accurate, I find, as Google, but it is much richer in the sense that they're driving video and photos. And, you know, it's all about this notion of the semantic web, which means, you know, all of this content eventually is going to be simply, they're simply going to become object, objects that are moved across, you know, sites, you know, at, at a pretty easy rate. So, um, I, I, I think that Google, I mean, that, that Microsoft and, and Bing have done a pretty good job of getting out in front of this stuff. Um, that this has been on their radar, and I know that this is one way, you know, over the last couple of years that they've been trying to differentiate themselves from Google. Um, I think another another question that seems to, to consistently come up, not only in this specific social platform, but in all of the other ones, and we were kind of talking about this earlier, so, you know, you're adding one more social platform to um, everything we have to do, right? Everything we're trying, we're kind of treading water right now, it seems like. So how are schools going to manage adding one more social network into their, their plan? Yeah, it's a great question, and you know, Bill, you're in a school that you take the first crack at it. Uh, it, it, it is a really good question, and, and one of the things that one of the things that I was actually curious about was something that I was trying to figure out with Facebook, um, and that was if you use a third-party application to update your Facebook page, um, a lot of times the edge rank will move that down so it doesn't 
it doesn't show up as, um, as readily in someone's news feed. And the question I had is, is with um, some of these other third-party applications that will allow you to post directly to Google+, Plus, um, will they do anything, you know, to, to, to hinder or to kind of uh, de-emphasize those types of postings? Because that's, that's really the one thing that, for particularly for small shops and schools where you're, you're trying to, you know, have a handful of people managing all of these things, the easiest ways in which you can allow them to post updates are going to be the things that they're going to go to first. So I'm going to look at what the other, you know, the integration hooks are. You know, what, what, what can you use to post to it? What can you use to pull, pull information into? And I know you, you generally don't want to have the same content in every channel, um, but anything that we can use to make it easier to, to deal with so you don't have to log in and go and you can do it from one spot will be extremely helpful. Yeah, I, I think. Um, go I'm ahead, sorry, Peter. Oh, I, I was just gonna say I believe Hootsuite just announced that they are now mm -hmm. uh, connect uh, hooking into to Google Plus. Yes, and there actually are a few more, and that's what I was gonna say. Is there? I looked today, and it looks like there are about five third-party tools. So it's Buddy Media, Hootsuite, Context Optional, Hearsay Social. Involver and Virtue um, are kind of those third-party apps that they're that Google is allowing to test the the social media management tools through. Um, so if you use those, it might be interesting to test those out and definitely send us some feedback. And if you you know if you have one that seems to work really well, um, let us know. I think the important piece for that is you know Bill touched on it, but Facebook has this edge rank system, right? And so there's been some studies that have shown that if you use these third-party apps, that they kind of they hit you for it, and they don't um, promote your status updates and your content as higher into those top news feed stories. And so you have to wonder if Google's gonna um, if Google's gonna apply you know some sort of algorithm that will either weigh you know the organic posting or the third-party posting uh, to weigh differently for each of the platforms. Don't you? think guys yeah I hope not but yeah. yeah I mean it would make sense right yeah um, Good. I guess the only last bit of advice I would have is you know I think you know, Maddie and I and Bill have all you know we've been kind of playing with these technologies whether it's Facebook or Twitter or WordPress blogging you know whatever the case may be for, for quite a while now and I think the thing that's taken us a long, all of us a long time to kind of get a sense of is you know what is our voice on each of these platforms you know, the way we communicate via our blog is a little bit different than how we communicate on Twitter and Facebook and so on. And so, you know, it, I think that's a reasonable expectation going into Google Plus. I'm not sure how uh, my personal voice is going to emerge there, but the only way that I'm going to figure it out is by trying and making a bunch of mistakes and just being okay with the fact that. So, you know, I, I think that would be the last thing that I leave folks with is that this is just a great time to kind of get a sense of how this is going to work for your organization and school and, and don't be scared to you know try a particular status update and find that you know if it doesn't doesn't get any any tread you know doesn't it doesn't get any grounding then you know maybe you need to tweak it and keep keep working that voice the other thing Peter is uh, you know I always recommend people and this is just me with the blogger and chief hat on is that we've got a lot of people on the site that are writing about and sharing about all these different things within Google Plus and they're not writing from a position of, you know, being experts, but things that they're trying, things that they're struggling with. And that's where, that's where I found most of, you know, my leads with stuff like this and the things that could have kind of inspired me and pushed me on to, to, to look and try different things. It's just seeing what people that are in our own community are doing and what they're posting up there and sharing with everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important too. You know, I've, I've I've kind of heard this in the background is a, a lot of people initially are saying, well, why would I go take part in Google Plus? You know, it's only 40 million users, whereas Facebook has 800 million users. And some of the conversations that are emerging from that are, well, then you get more bang for your buck, right? So the the content and stories that you're sharing, people are actually might be listening in this instance because there's there's less noise in this um, in this social channel right now. So I think it's something to to think about. Out and um, you know, look into. We are going to continue this conversation on December fifteenth, 
Um, we'll probably have the webinar again at 2 p.m. That works really well for us. So we'll we'll revisit some of the information that we've covered today, but more importantly, we'll talk about how it's changed in, in a month's time um, and see if you know some of these our speculation emerges into actual truth. Um, so thank you, Peter and Bill, for such a compelling dialogue and presentation today. I think everyone here will walk away with something they can uh, put towards their Google Plus uh, pages and or other social channels. Um, Ed Social Media's next webinar actually is communicating and connecting with social media. Um, it's scheduled for November 29th at 2 p.m. Jason Ramsden is the director of technology at Ravenscroft, um, but he's also a co-author of this communicating and connecting with social media book. Um, so he's going to talk a little bit about how he um, brought this this social media um, strategy into his school and some important things for um, your school to think about as far as the strategy is concerned. So we're thrilled you were able to join us for our free webinar, and we want to thank our sponsors, Admissions Quest and Proof, for supporting this event. And I think that's it for today, guys. Anything else? That's all I got. It. Thanks, Maddie. Yeah, thank you. So email us info at socialmedia.com if you have any questions or you can certainly tweet at us or um, in, you know, engage with us at any of our social platforms. Thanks so much for listening.